Hello, my name is Dr. Boyd, and I'm coming to you on behalf of the Transformational Education Adventure Center located in McLean, Virginia, and it's also known as the T Center. And I'll be teaching you a STEM lesson today. Our lesson is about how airplanes, paper airplanes, fly. And we're going to make an airplane by the end of today's lesson. All you will need is a piece of paper, all right? So how do planes fly? What happens that causes a plane to fly? Now, today I'm speaking specifically about paper airplanes, but a lot of these concepts also exist in the airplanes that we travel on each day. Commercial airplanes, jet airplanes, military airplanes, the same concepts apply. So let's talk about it. I have a diagram here and it explains the forces involved in flight. You'll notice that there is a down arrow. This down arrow points to gravity and that's because gravity is the force that causes an airplane to come back to the ground. But you'll notice this up arrow is lift. That is the force that allows the plane to, to fly above the ground it goes in the opposite direction of gravity. you also notice this force here, thrust. Thrust is the forward force of an airplane. You get the thrust when the airplane, when you first, if it's, if it's a paper airplane, when you toss it. And then there's this other force over here, drag. Drag is opposite of thrust, all right? So those are the four forces that are involved in flight. Now, I said there is a thrust force and we get that when you throw the plane, all right? So imagine that I'm throwing this airplane. At the point that I release the airplane, it has no more thrust unless another force acts upon it. So sometimes if I throw this airplane outside, there might be wind that would carry it even further. All right, that might make it go faster than even when I first threw it, all right? However, there's always gonna be an opposing force that's gonna cause this plane to eventually slow down and stop, all right? That is the drag. That's what's uh, opposing the forward motion of the plane. Also, there's gravity, which is slowly bringing the airplane down to the ground. So with a paper airplane, I get two things from throwing it. I will get my lift, which it keeps the plane above the ground and I'll get my thrust. But the moment I release the plane, and it, it flies away, the other forces are acting on it. That is gravity is gonna bring it down and drag is gonna slow it down. So it might've started out going like this and then it slows down, all right? So those are the four forces acting on a plane. Does this apply to commercial airplanes? Yes. One difference though, the commercial airplane has gasoline and it has batteries in, in the plane. And so it may be able to apply more thrust later on, just like if you were driving a car or riding in a car and your parents are driving it, they can press the gas pedal to make the, the car go faster, all right? So that's the same concept. But in a commercial plane, the thrust can be continuously added to the plane as it's traveling, all right? Now, airplanes can travel, a paper airplane in particular uh, today, can travel in three different modes. Uh, we talk about pitch. When we say pitch, that's P-I-T-C-H. That's talking about the upward or downward motion of the plane. So we say a plane, a plane pitches upward or it pitches downward. There's this other concept called roll. That is the plane rolling, right? So if you're looking head on, it's rolling like this. All right, most of the time when you're flying on an airplane, you don't want it to roll. And you don't want it to pitch up too high or pitch downward at all, right? You want it to pitch downward when it's landing, but smoothly. You want it to pitch upward when you're taking off or when you're trying to increase altitude, but smoothly. You don't want it to pitch straight up or pitch straight down. Similarly, we really don't want roll when we're on an airplane, right? The last motion of a plane uh, is called yaw. That's spelled Y-A-W. And it goes like this, 
all right? That's the plane moving in this lateral motion. We normally don't want that either. Even with paper airplanes, we normally don't want yaw, all right? Sometimes with a paper airplane, roll can make an airplane, the flight of it look pretty cool. And that can be useful in some ways. And pitch, we do want pitch, uh, even with paper airplanes, we don't normally want it to pitch straight up. We want it to pitch enough that it can go pretty far, right? So again, just to review before we make our paper airplane, the four forces that are acting on a plane are drag, that opposes thrust, Drag is, uh, goes backwards, thrust goes forward. We have lift and we have gravity. Lift is the upward force, gravity is the downward force. Last thing, you might notice this little red dot here. What does that red dot mean? Well, that red dot represents the center of, of gravity of the plane, all right? The further forward that is, or the center of mass of the plane, I apologize, the further forward on the airplane that that point is, so if it's here, then it's easier for the plane to travel forward. If I put the center of mass towards the back, that's gonna hold the plane back so it won't travel as far forward as if the center of mass were closer to the front. All right. Lastly, pitch, roll, and yaw. Pitch, up and down, roll like this, and yaw sideways. All right, those are the modes of a plane. Let's make a plane. Maybe we can make one like this. This is a little glider. Got some pretty cool wings on it, right? Let's make one of those. Here's what you'll need to do with your paper. First, I'm gonna take this corner here. I'm sorry, this corner here, and I'm gonna fold it over and I'll show you exactly how. All right. So I've made this triangular shape, okay? So basically I took one corner and just folded it and lined it up with this side. All right, so that's what I have. Now I'm gonna take this corner here and I'm gonna fold it down to this corner here. I'm gonna take this corner, this point and put it there, all right? All right, so this is what my paper looks like now. Again, I just took this, this fold here, this corner here, and folded it over and put it there. All right. Now I'm gonna take this point and I'm gonna fold it down to here, just where this line, where this paper line is. All right, so this is the shape I have, it looks like. All right, now I'm gonna fold this in half so that both sides look the same. So I'm gonna fold this piece in half. All right, so it's symmetrical. So when I fold it in half, it looks like this now. So I hold it this way. I look at, I just fold it in half like that. And now I'm going to take this wing, one piece of paper and fold it upward. I'll show you what it looks like in just a moment. Okay, so now it looks like this. All right, so I just took this flap and folded it upward. All right. Now I'm going to take the other flap and fold it upward so that it's symmetrical. When I say symmetrical, that means that one half looks the same as the other half. All right. So now I've got this shape on both sides. Okay. And in the center, I have like this little piece that I can hold on to. Okay. So that is my little airplane glider. But I can make this even more cool and it can fly a little differently if I take this portion of the wing and this portion of the wing and fold it over. So that's what I'm gonna do. Just a little portion of it though. 
I'll show you. See, so I've just folded just this little portion here. All right, and now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And now I have an airplane glider. All right, pretty cool, huh? Give my little glider. And now I can throw it and find out where it goes. These little flaps on the wing, depending on how much I bend them over, will have an effect on the flight path of my, of my glider. Or if you didn't want to fold it over at all, you can just leave it flat and you'll see how your glider goes. All right, keep in mind, when I throw this plane, the four forces that will be affecting it. There's going to be a lift force that causes the plane to go up. There's going to be a gravity force that causes it to come back down. There's going to be the thrust that it gets when I throw it. And the thing that slows it down will be the drag. All right. Well, that is our lesson for today. Make sure to like this video and feel free, please do share it. And again, this is coming to you from the Transformational Education Adventure Center, also known as the T-Center. All right. Thank you, and I'll see you later.